Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us again for another episode of Leading on Mondays. My name is Floyd Lungu, and I'm so delighted to be with you today. And I'm joined by my friend and partner at Maxwell Leadership, Modelina Guinness. Welcome, Modelina. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Florin, for having me again <laughs> with I my know. questions. Yes. Yeah, it seems like this is kind of a, a longer term collaboration and partnership because I love the way you uh, ask those questions and we gather questions from our clients, from your clients, from the public. So this is kind of the format that we, we found that works best and I think the audience likes it. So we're going to be together on this show for, for longer. <laughs> Yes, yes. I, I actually, um, I actually remember now when we started as a collaboration, and it, me having some some leadership questions to you. I was curious how would you reply to those questions, and here we are now having a show with uh, weekly episodes that I'm asking the leadership questions, and Florian is actually replying to them from from his experience. And what should we as leaders? Uh, need to apply in those situations because first of all we will be and we are in this kind of situation and everybody would like to know how to deal with this and i know that today we have uh, another topic which is important for anybody not not only for leaders who have a leadership position we today we are going to talk about the priorities and how to prioritize our action our activities among the day and among our day-to-day uh, -day job so, Florin, I have some questions for us today. Are you ready? Sure. Absolutely. I'm ready. Born ready. Okay, good. I think everybody already know what is a priority. So, I don't think we should go again. We should go with the definition of a pri what is a priority because we can, we can get the definition from that, whatever we, we are looking for. And I would like to ask you from the leadership point of view, why are priorities importance for a leader yeah that that's actually you know because we have these questions probably someone asked themselves how can i actually add more value to my time because as leaders we don't need any help to get busy we already probably have a you know full agendas sometimes overflow and we need to work evenings or or you know work weekends and so the picture that I had in mind, like, and I would like you to imagine this picture, it's of a leader that carries home some, some, you know, folders with, with papers that she would have to review. And she also have kind of drags, you know, this suitcase, you know, on, on wheels with even more folders for her to review and sits at home and, and has a dinner on, on, on a Tuesday night in front of her computer and reviews documents and, and, you know, kind of tries to catch up with work until she almost like files falls asleep and then the next day she wakes up and starts all over again and she believes oh now now i'm really gonna I'm, I'm really gonna catch up and so what happens she goes into the office and there you know first thing in the morning someone on her team knocks you know at her door and say hey you know my computer is broken and what she does say, well no problem i'll call the it and later a colleague asks her you know, we have this presentation for a, for a board meeting, you know, can you help me with something? And she kind of drops her work and go help that person too. And, and you know, in the afternoon, uh, they have a they have a challenge with a supplier and that comes to her attention. And, and she kind of gets dragged into that one too. Can, can you get the picture? Like kind of, she's kind of yeah. adding more work to her agenda. And, and that's why we, we then realize, oh, we cannot do everything. We need to know what is our responsibility as a leader and, and what is not. And I think this is the biggest challenge we have as leaders. We're not that good at saying no, right? When someone comes to a request, the first thing that it, it you know comes to our mind is, okay, let, let me help you, right? Oh, I'll, I'll do that. Oh, I'll, I'll fix that. Oh, I'll, I'll take this on. So because we want to serve and because we want to add value, what we're doing, we're kind of taking too much on our plates. And our plates start to overflow. And when they start to overflow, then we get into that negative spiral, and and we, you know, we don't have any 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 balance in our, you know, private and, and professional life. And and we set actually the example for the team. So, for these reasons, and and for that kind of situation, and I know I have clients that struggle with that. Um, for that kind of situation, that's why we're answering these questions, what they can do to 
prioritize because we don't need more help to get busy. We just need to know how can we do more of what is important to us rather than doing everything which is on our agenda. Your example actually got me thinking about one quote. I, I don't I don't remember exactly the quote, but I know the meaning of it. So if you keep yourself busy, it doesn't mean that you're doing something important or you are prioritizing your your important things. So we need to pay attention to if we are we are keeping ourselves busy just for the sake of being busy, or do we have a lot of activities that are important to us? And I would like to go with uh, with the next question, Florin, related to uh, this topic today. What is the difference between time management and priorities? That's such a good question because, yeah, because so many times we, we use terms like, you know, um, uh, when I'll find a time where, where oh, let, let's, you know, let's say, you know, this solution saves you time, right? Where, where we talk about, you know, making time, you know, that's impossible. We cannot control time. You know, time flows and, and time goes. Either way, if, if you're busy or you, you're not busy, if you do something or you, you don't do, if you are productive or not, times will fly anyway. So instead of us mm -hmm. trying to manage something like time, we, we should look at our days like this. So John Maxwell says that, you know, when it comes to our days, all our days have the same size. Like we all have 24 hours in a day, right? So it says, yeah. look at your day like a suitcase, right? And so some of us are able to pack more in that suitcase compared to others, right? So, so yeah. and I'm not only pack more, but, but when he talks about packing more, it's not about more, you know, quantity, but actually the quality of the things we do and the return on those activities, right? It's not about mm -hmm. adding mm -hmm. more activities mm -hmm. to our agenda. So when we look at time, we actually cannot control time. Time, it's not in our control. And if we focus on time, then we focus in the wrong place because what we should do is we should look at our agendas. We all have the same hour of, uh, the same number of hours in a day. The difference mm -hmm. is in how do we spend our time? How do we invest our time, right? What kind of activities do we fit in our, you know, in a time span? If, if you take a, a normal, you know, eight hour workday, right? It's not about having more hours in, in your day. It's about prioritizing the, the right type of activities that will give you the best return on your time investment. And that's mm -hmm. why I love focusing on priorities rather than on time, right? So mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. normally we talk about time management and we go on courses about time management, but what we should look at is actually how do we spend the time and what kind of activities do we put on our agenda? That's why I love to speak with leaders about priorities and being proactive in your prioritization rather than speaking about time. Does it make sense? Time management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it makes uh, very much sense. And um, I have an example that I would like to share with everybody um, related to my priorities and my time management. Because uh, when I have had this question, I was thinking that priorities are part of time management. But now you, you, uh, you said that uh, we should look differently about that. It's better to look at priorita priorities instead of time management. So I have an example for us every time I need to travel somewhere. And usually before pandemic, I had to travel to my work and it was 50, 50 minutes commute uh, in the morning and 50 minutes commute in the, uh, in the evening. And now when I need to go to my work, I need to think about this. If I go by car, by my personal car, or should I go by the public transport? Because the time would might be almost similar. Uh, it's, I think, 40, 45 minutes by car and 50 minutes with commute, with public transport. And whenever I think about that, I said, OK, good. If I go by car, what would I, what would I gain? If I go by public uh, transport, what would I gain? And usually I go with the public transport if I don't have too, ma too many things to carry 
on my back, like my laptop, my my bag, some papers, some books, whatever. So if I don't have uh, too much things to to drag and to yeah to 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 go with me, then I go with the public transport because in that uh, in those fifty minutes I actually read. So instead of me driving and maybe listening to a to a, a, a podcast or an audio book, something like that. But by the way, we are trying to different things. Driving and listening, it's it's different. So you're not paying attention to neither of them. Um, I like to read in uh, in the public transport. So for me, it will be it's it's a prioritization. I spend time reading. I do something that it helps me grow. And in that time, it's not a dead time because I'm not just wasting my time on, I don't know, social media or listening to whatever. I'm just uh, reading something that uh, helps me to understand more and to be better at what I do. So we need to think about prioritization in this way okay. uh, and also in the time management. Is it something that is very important? Is bringing me value or not? If I do this, is bringing me value. What do I have to gain? What do I have to lose if I do this? What do I have to win? Win? What do I have to lose if I do that? And I think we can. Uh, I think I put the the ball. I, I throw the ball in your court now, Florin. Absolutely. Prioritization. <laughs> sure. And, and I think you're making a really good point there because it's not necessarily because when we look at when I sit with leaders and we say, well, okay, now this course or this program is going to take you four to five minutes every second week, right? When I coach people, that's kind yeah. of the the kind of package I offer, right? So we have a 45 minutes session every two weeks. And and when they look at their agenda, well, Freud, I cannot find 45 minutes in my agenda. Well, of course you cannot find 45 minutes in your agenda. It's not like you had 45 minutes, you were just rolling your thumbs and, and now we, we have a coaching session. Not at all. It's about looking at how can I do, you know, where can I find those small things, like those little shifts, those little moments. It's very difficult for you to maybe find 40 minutes or 50 minutes time in your agenda just to sit and read. But if you mm -hmm. commute mm -hmm. and you can read while you commute, then you maximize what we call dead time, right? Yes, I used to do time. that all the time. When I commuted, if I commuted as you, if I commuted by car and I would drive, I would always listen to something. If I would commute by, by public transport, by bus, I will always read something. Why? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that was my personal growth time. And, and now I kind of miss that. And when I, because I, I work from home a lot, then I don't need to travel. But then whenever I travel and, and we take a road trip, you know, now I also taught my friends to do that. And last time we traveled, they said, well, Gordon, can we just listen to a book instead of listening to radio? I said, oh, I love wow. that. I cannot wait for you to say that because, you know, so many times, <laughs> you know, I, I would borrow my car to someone and I will always leave it on, you know, on, on a tape or a podcast or something. And I will yeah. finally change to the radio, right? So so when they, they, they take the car, oh, probably say, well, what, what is Florian listening to here? Let me put some radio. And now mm -hmm. they're actually saying, oh, can we put a, a tape? Can we put an audio book? So I love Audible and I have, you know, all the books that I want to read. I listen to them first and then I read. So that's mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. maximizing what we call to be those dead times, right? So mm -hmm. absolutely, that's a, that's a great strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I just want to congratulate you. That means leadership. You influence your friends <laughs> to actually listen listen to to podcasts. That's good. I, I'm trying that with, with some of my close uh, people. I, I almost succeed with some somebody, but I'm not there yet. So I need to increase my influence as a leader, as we talked about in a previous video. I would like to go to the next question because you said something, but uh, I would like you to to give us some more details. How we can do to add more value we as leaders to our time? So how can we make our time even more valuable? Absolutely. So we usually, when I coach leaders, I share with them three strategies. So so three strategies. So these three <laughs> strategies, first of all, is the Pareto principle, right? So I'm just going to go through them very quick and then go a little bit deeper. So the yeah. first one is the Pareto principle or the 80-20 principle. And I actually created a, a, a worksheet that I take them through because it's not about only prioritizing the way you 
uh, spend your time and, and your agenda, but also prioritizing your people. So we're gonna we're gonna dive deeper in that. So if you want that mm -hmm. worksheet, there will be a link in the comments so you can just download that and use it with your team. But I'm gonna share with you how how you use it. The second one is what John Maxwell calls the three R's. Right? What gives us uh, the, the greatest return? What is required of us as leader? Because there are some things that we simply cannot delegate. Right? And then yes. what gives us reward? Right? We cannot just do the things uh, that that we need to do. And, and not put anything of the things we want to do and we feel good after doing it, right? So required, return, reward. And then the, 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 the last one is it's adding more white space to your calendar or, or as I said, you know, adding margin to your calendar because sometimes we are overly optimistic about the things that we can achieve in a, in a, in a certain time frame. And we kind of fill our calendars with appointments or tasks, you know, and, and there is no white space. And I have yes, found yes. that as a general rule, things take longer than we expect. And so yeah, if we great. don't have any margin in our calendar, then when one task overflows, there is no way for us to be able to actually, you know, do what we plan to do, right? So so all other tasks will, will just, you know, move later and later and later. And if we don't have some buffer time, we're not going to be able to do what we plan to do. So shortly, the Pareto Principle Ready 20 to our agenda, the three R's from John Maxwell and, and adding more margin. Wow. Sounds good? Yeah, sounds very good. And I think I also, I'm using uh, almost uh, all of them at the moment. I say more almost because not everything I'm doing. I'm not doing everything you said. Um, I also like the create margin space. Um, it was a time when I filled my whole calendar with, with well, meetings, activities. And at some moment, and I, I realized that this is one of the mistakes that people are doing around me, people that I'm observing. They try to put as many things as possible in their own calendar that by the end of the day, they are exhausted. They... Maybe they don't. For, they they forget to eat. They remember to eat their first meal at uh, in the evening because they had meetings over meetings, activities over activities, and they don't have what I like to say. They don't have time to breathe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I usually ask ask people, "Do you breathe? Do you have time to breathe? If you don't yeah. have time to breathe." <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> then you, you put too many things on your calendar or maybe you are doing something that most people don't do, as you mentioned in the, um, in the uh, principle, Pareto principle. Maybe you are not multiplying yourself as a leader. Because if you're doing a lot of things and you don't have time to eat, or drink water, or move a little bit around your office, then uh, it means that you're doing most of the work, maybe 100% of the work, and you don't delegate at all. And you don't grow anybody else to take some of your responsibilities so you can be able to breathe and eat <laughs> and move around your office a little. And... Um, these are the questions I have for I had for today, Florine. I really I'm very happy that we could share with our listeners and our um, people who follow us. And I would like to introduce our next topic because we have questions prepared for uh, next week. Absolutely. But before we go to that, I think we want to because I think the eighty twenty principle sometimes yes. might be, you know, not as straightforward to apply right especially to our leadership right so yeah, so yeah. Shall, shall we yeah. unpack that a little bit more okay yes sure this is actually a topic that people uh, don't uh, realize before we talk about in our leadership sessions <laughs> the part of principle they think oh yeah 2080 yeah it's it's easy to follow but when i think about okay what are your top uh, 20 in your day-to-day -day life like people activities something that you're doing in the in in a regular basis people just don't real they don't realize that this is something that they need to they need to also look because prin Pareto principle actually applies to everything in our life all all domains in our life so please Florin share with us uh what uh something so we can make it more clear to everybody listening to us absolutely so when we look at 8020 and the Pareto principle, what it actually says, it says that there are 20% of our activities 
that give us 80% of our results. So in yes. other words, there are some activities on our agenda that have a disproportionate impact on our results. And the, the biggest challenge with us and, and for us as individuals and as leaders is to identify what are those 20% activities that yes. actually give us the results that we want. And when we work on a task, on a presentation or something, we know that it takes 20% of the time. If we have one hour, we take 20% of that time to get it to 80% done. And then we spend mm -hmm. the rest of that hour, right, to, to just polish it. And we know sometimes 80% done, it's, it's good enough, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're almost there, yeah. <laughs> so, so it also applies to one specific task, right? You know, how much time should we put on a task? Well, I have come to the conclusion that tasks tend to fill the time that we allocated to them. So in other words, if you only have 20 minutes to, to, to complete a task, you're probably going to do it as, you know, as well as you can in those 20 minutes. But if you have one hour, I'm sure you're going to take that hour and, and you're still going to do it as well as you can, right? So yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We very yeah. seldomly finish a task, you know, in shorter time. We just say, I have an hour. Okay, so let me let me do this, you know, properly. So on one on one way, we also have to be realistic of the level of expectation that we set on ourselves and how much time we'll, we'll allocate for each task. But today we're going to talk more about how to choose the tasks that we have on our agenda. And as a leader, we need to know what gives us the greatest return on our time investment. We need to also know what I share in the, if, if you go and, and take the, the, you know, download the, the worksheet that I, that I share that, it talks about identifying who are the top 20% people in, in your team. Because as a leader, you mentioned multiplying, right? How do we multiply yes. our time? How do we add value to our time? Well, spending time to, with the top 20% of our people. Because what happens usually is the, is the, the bottom 20% of our team that comes to us with different challenges and need more support. And if we yes. are uh, allowing ourselves to be dragged into that, we're, we're going to help the person, of course. But is that the best investment for our time? What if we train, you know, another or, or one or two layers of leaders in our team? What if we take care of the best 20% of our team? And so then they can take care of the rest and so on and so forth. And so we kind of multiply ourselves and we increase our, our impact in, with our time. So there are some questions that, that leaders should ask themselves, you know, how to identify the, 20, the top 20%? That's also a challenge, right? How do we identify the top 20% people on your team? Well, you, you ask yourself some, some questions, like if this person is going to start working against me or leave the company, mm -hmm. would that going to affect us? Would that going to mm -hmm. affect us in a way that we, we might need to restructure and we're not able to keep on delivering what we say we're going to deliver? Is that is that going to impact us in a way that we, we might have some delays, but we're going to manage it? Or is that mm -hmm. not going to impact us at all? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that way mm -hmm. you understand, like, yeah. who are the top 20% people? Like, like people, when I ask leaders this question, oh, they, they're a little bit, oh, I haven't thought about that. Think about if Madalena is leaving your company or starts working against you, you know, what's the impact of that? And the higher the impact, then the higher people should be on your kind of leadership list, right? So then you focus your 80% of your time and resources on those 20% people. And at their turn, they can also prioritize their time in the same way and, and spend their time with, with the next layer of people in, in your organization. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. And uh, yeah, a very good explanation. And uh, that's a very good point related to the multiplication. And um, of course, leaders will ask, OK, so what if I spend 80 percent of my time resources to the 20 percent of uh, the best people in my company or in my team and they leave? And this is where 
multiplication should be applied <laughs> because it's more likely one person to live than to uh, have three or four people to live at the same time. So it's better to increase this awareness in your team to talk to, to your top 20% of people to learn uh, or to teach them how to delegate and to teach them how to multiply themselves. Because once um, they multiply themselves, if one of your best people is leaving, then you have the other the other people that were trained by the, the best people. Yes. So it's it's uh, of course, it will be a damage to your team, but it won't be that big, um, that high damage if uh, if only that person is living and your whole company or your whole team will be left with nothing. <laughs> So, yeah, please follow our video that we talked about uh, this in, uh, I think, a few few weeks ago. I need to remember exactly what time. And maybe you can just leave it in a comment later with the link of that video. Because um, I would like for next time to continue the, this, this discussion related to what is uh, what your team isn't telling you as a leader. So... We are going to discover, maybe you already know, some of the secrets that people don't want to share with you if you're the leader in the team and uh, how to deal with these situations uh, related to what we are going to talk about, the questions and the answers that we are going to share with, that, with you next time. Absolutely. So there are some things that people will never going to tell you. And you as a leader, you really have to pay attention to the body language, to the dynamics in the team. And, and, and so you kind of have to, you know, just read between the lines. So we're going to share some of those with you next week uh, in, in the next episode. And also, if you're interested to diving deeper in these topics or, or, or other leadership development topics, I'm going to host a free training on June 2nd. So on June 2nd, at 4 p.m. Stockholm time, I'm going to host a one hour free training on how you can develop from inside, you know, developing the leader within you. Right. And and I would love for you to join us. So, again, we're going to share a link with you. If you want to join, uh, be, be, you know, feel free to, to register. And uh, as we mentioned, next week, we're going to get back to you with some secrets that your team and your member team members actually withhold from you because uh, because of different reasons. And we're going to discover those next week. Sounds so good. All right. Thank, thank you. you for, absolutely. Thank you for uh, co-hosting this with me, Madalena. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Take care. Have a productive week. Bye, everybody.